Hello, I'm Gregor McIntyre of Faithly Parish Church and this is the Sunday service for the week beginning April the 25th. We gather together in the presence of our Shepherd God who calls us each by name, who restores our souls and leads us in the way of righteousness and whose goodness and love never stop pursuing us. This is the God whom we have come to worship. Let us pray. Living God, your voice is not silent. You have not withdrawn from this world into heaven. You address each person and you speak still to the nations. We worship you this morning wanting to be filled with your presence. For you are closer to us than our own life's breath. You are, in fact, our caring shepherd. Like a warm sun on our faces. Like the spring breeze in our hair. You touch our lives every day. Yet you are equally concerned with governments, empires and industrial giants. You are a shepherd for this whole world and wo watch over all that we have made. So help us to see you not as our private mascot, but in all your glory, in your immense strength, your unparalleled holiness, in a purity that would have us awestruck. an anger at the sins we commit that we would shake in fear to begin to imagine. And yet, you are the God who has made peace with us, giving us your own Son, that we might know him as the one we should follow through good days and difficult ones, for he is our good shepherd and his voice calls us to be people of his gospel. Amen. 
friends, our reading this morning is from John chapter 10, reading verses 11 to 13, and tells of Jesus' claim to be the Good Shepherd. And Linda McGrouther will read for us today. Reading John 10, verses 11 to 13. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he has a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. Amen. Linda, thank you very much. Shepherds are a popular image in the Bible. We have parables from Jesus. In Ezekiel's book in the Bible, there is an amazing chapter that calls the, the bad shepherds to account. And then we just have to look at individuals. Think of Moses after he was a prince and fled he became a shepherd for something like 40 years. David was the shepherd boy who grew to become a king. And then there is Jesus who tells us that he is our good shepherd. And aren't we glad of that? That image lives with us through Sunday school when we can see in our mind's eye the scrapbook image or the illustration, the poster on this, the church hall wall of Jesus, the Good Shepherd, a lamb across his shoulders and perhaps a gathering of children round about him. The Shepherd speaks of care and maybe gentleness. And yet the shepherds we meet in the Bible the ordinary and everyday keeper of sheep, well, they were a tough lot. Those shepherds on Bethlehem's hills by night, well, they did not deserve angels singing to them, but that's God's way. They were paid a little and the work was tough and they and their like were rough. So it's a strange thing to hear Jesus claiming to be the Good Shepherd. But he's comparing himself not with the ordinary man sent to the hills at night. He's comparing himself to those who were leaders or claimed to be leaders. There were the leaders, the teachers and the authorities of, of the religious castes in Israel. They clearly did not understand the movement of God in their midst, even when they could speak to Jesus. They were blind and deaf to his message. And there were others who were corrupt, Pharisees who worked the system. And there was an expectation that those who had become high priest did it by politicking and lived in that, in that position to gratify themselves and their ambition. No wonder Jesus claims to be not just a shepherd, but the good shepherd, for he has seen too many of the wrong kind. And Jesus' comparison to be good points out the trouble with the bad. The bad shepherd, or the hired hand perhaps, will abandon the sheep at the first sign of trouble. He will run away, allow the wolf to attack and the flock to be scattered. When we realise this is not about sheep, but a parable that speaks to the church, the gathering of believers and followers of Jesus, then we can see 
that bad leadership brings about big trouble. There is damage done to the whole congregation. It is splintered by division, scattered when weak leadership takes over. But Jesus is the good shepherd and he knows what his sheep are like. Just think, if you have, as I have, walked even through the university grounds recently, you'll have walked past sheep which one day show some sign of bravery continuing to munch away as you walk past and the next time you go a step near them on the path and they scatter like you've clothed yourself in a wolf's disguise. What's to tell? How do we know what we're going to be like? Jesus has to cope with a church which is full of easily distracted human beings who promise to be faithful in following Jesus one day and give in too easily the next to their own distractions or their own fears. But the last line of this parable about running away, caring nothing about the sheep, well, that's not Jesus. He's the good shepherd. He cares and he cares for us all as churches and congregations. He cares about how a congregation demonstrates its trust in his gospel. He cares how the church welcomes and presents itself to those who visit and try it out. He cares to see congregations respond to the needs of a generation and follow not their own mind, but follow him. And the Good Shepherd cares about each of us as an individual. So we must be ready to turn to him and follow him. If you have need of peace and comfort in your life, then go to him. He will never let you down. If you are mourning, go to the Good Shepherd who is also the source of resurrection and eternal life. If you need to discover how to live more like, well, that great model for our life, living kindly, patiently and respectfully, then follow that shepherd. He will show you the way to live life so that you have it in fullness, living out the life of the Christian God has called. Jesus is the good shepherd who cares for his sheep. Now, let's sing a second hymn this morning and sing together, I Serve a Risen Saviour, a hymn that Ewan played as a voluntary just a week or two ago and I thought we should definitely make an attempt to sing and to learn. So I don't doubt most of you can manage it and if anyone finds it awkward, then remember, you can always wind back or come back and play the song again.
Friends, our second prayer today is being read to us by Sheila Farkerson. Sheila, help us to pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you call us as a shepherd calls on his flock to follow you. Not simply to believe, not merely to declare our faith and confess you as Lord, but to keep on following wherever you lead. Lord Jesus, help us. Help us to follow you eagerly, faithfully, devotedly, seeing where you are at work and staying close to you. Help us to follow in your footsteps, pursuing the way of love and accepting the road to sacrifice. Lord Jesus, help us. Help us to look to you, letting your presence guide our steps, trusting you so completely that your love shines through us. Help us to trust your voice, not allowing ourselves to become distracted or to lose heart so that we wander away from you, but keeping faith to the end. Lord Jesus, help us. Lord Jesus Christ, as you call us, as you call all your people to follow you, teach us what that means. And in your grace, help us to respond and be followers of your way. Lord Jesus, help us. For we ask it in your name. Amen. Thanks to you, Sheila, and to Linda for her reading earlier. Our intimation, there's only one this week, is that on Monday night, Walk and Talk is starting. Now, the good news is that if you're a walker, you will find company uh, meeting at the church car park on Monday night from seven o'clock. So the meeting is at seven o'clock so that you can find people to walk with and start the walking. Unfortunately, we are not able to open the hall, so the sitting down to talk, it can't happen yet. But isn't it good that this part of our normal practice over the summer months can begin? Meet at 7pm in the church car park and then be certain that you still have to not be in a group larger than six, but uh, sensible steps will be taken to ensure that those who want to walk at any particular pace or particular distance can have company. So enjoy yourselves on Monday night if you're going to take part in that walk and talk.
blessing of God Almighty, Father and Son and Holy Spirit, be with you now and always. Thank you.